Hi, my name is Brent Whitney, and I am the co-artistic and executive director of the Traverse City Dance Project. Um, currently, I live in Brooklyn, New York, and Traverse City, Michigan. Hi, I am Jennifer McQuiston Lott, and I am the co-artistic director of the Traverse City Dance Project, Brent's partner in crime. We co-founded the project in 2012 and are now celebrating our eighth season. And we're going online for our eighth season. And my name is Heinel Pivnik. I am a violinist and the music director of the Traverse City Dance Project. I live in New York City and I spend my summers in Traverse City. I've been working at Interlochen Arts Camp for the past eight years. This will be my first summer not coming back to Interlochen. We are a not-for-profit seasonal summer dance company. Our mission is to produce and present professional dance in northern Michigan and beyond. Every summer we bring in dancers, musicians, choreographers, and composers to participate in our summer series. We had planned a 2020 summer full of performances throughout Traverse City and the surrounding area. We've decided to create an online festival instead. So Heinel and I are curating teams of choreographers and composers who are creating together from the safety of their homes. And these are small commissions that the Traverse City Dance Project is offering to these artists. We're calling it the No Distance Festival. We look at it as an ongoing celebration of creativity under extreme limitations, which we're all experiencing right now. Some of them are working like blind dates. They really don't know each other and we're pairing them together um, based on our gut and scheduling. And, <laughs> um, and I'm really, really excited about every single one so far. I feel like the, everybody really understands the spirit of this and is really eager to make and to have a reason to make and have a lot of freedom around their making. So we're not asking for any one specific thing. We have a loose theme of human connection it's on everybody's minds right now. How do you have human connection when you're so far away and when you can't have physical contact? But other than that, we are telling the artists to just take wild risks. We're like, why not? Let's figure out how we work in this new world and go ahead and you, know, you have the freedom to fail. And maybe we'll <laughs> air it again if you decide you wanna try again, like that's fine. I think that this should be a safe space. That's maybe the first thing that we want it to be.
<laughs> yeah, so that was my first. And um, I don't really have a lot of space in my apartment. I, I was like literally running into furniture and whatever you see in the background. So they have, like, they're pretty much like obstacles and just like trying to like make a floor phrase that was like had little dynamic shifts and like static pauses and just trying to be one with the floor. Cause like, I guess that's something that I've been really into lately is just a lot of floor work. The last piece that I choreographed, I think 95 to 85 percent of the piece was like on the floor and did floor work maybe just to get the ball rolling just do some floor work because that was like what i was most comfortable with without like knowing where we were gonna go with this and like how we were going to um, approach this whole like collaboration on opposite ends of the coast just trying to figure out like how to navigate this whole situation you know uh, I was just going to add, I liked how you um, talked about the restriction of the space because the whole process has been really interesting to me because of the restrictions involved. Because um, usually, you know, you have the wide open studio or like a stage and there's no limitation generally, not always, but a lot of the time there's no sort of limitation to how you can move or like how small you have to make your movement. I find it kind of harder to start with a blank canvas where it's like oh you don't have limitations you can kind of do whatever you want and you have all the space in the world but here we don't you know if you start with a project and you're doodling something and there's a line already there you can sort of grow from the line but if you start with a blank piece of paper you have to come up with the first thing and that's um almost harder mm. so, Agreed. Uh, it's gonna be so interesting as this season kind of progresses but um all three of us have worked together through Traverse City Dance Project like several times and we're, we're familiar with each other as people and we're familiar, you're both very familiar with each other as dancers. Um, so I'm also, I'm super curious about like how, if someone is creating something with someone else that they're not familiar with, like how can you, if you do want to create something that is like in sync with making it look like you're partnering, but you're not familiar with the other dancer very much, maybe the two of you were able to really picture what the other person would be like right next to you because you have danced together before. And I think that's a really interesting, just kind of like as a non-dancer observing this and hearing what you're saying, it's, um, it's just kind of interesting to kind of imagine you creating these phrases and wondering if you're picturing your, your counterpart and remembering like their size, remembering their, their movements, like where do they stand versus where you stand. Um, I don't know if that's something that you both were actively thinking about. I'm sure you did because your, you know, dance is so physical. So there, there was a phrase that Amy uh, did, not this one, it was another one, but I think it was Ames. It was the, the partnering thing that you wanted me to add on to it was really easy to respond to that. And I wasn't struggling because I was just going off the empty spaces or shapes that she was making. And it was like really easy to uh, respond to that and react to it. Um, and what I did was like, when I was filming that, I had um, my laptop on with the video and I had it like across from the camera just so I could see like specifically like what shapes you were making and then like just trying to react to that like in real time while I was filming. Um, I think that helped like a lot. And it gave that whole sense of like, yeah, we were in the moment there with one another, like even though just physically not present. Yeah, for me, that was like really easy when it came to that. Like, but like just starting off with absolutely nothing and then just trying to you know, figure out like what gesture do I want to do here? And just like second guessing or like not really having like a lot of direction, but when there was material already thrown out and stuff, it was a lot easier to um, just vibe off of that and get yeah. the rolling. That was my favorite process too, is like the partnering bits, the solo, the solo phrases were a little bit harder for the same mm -hmm. thing, the like limitation thing where you can start from zero and then you have to come up with something um, but the partnering stuff was so fun because I would sort of make up a phrase and envision what Jeremy might do, like how he might respond to it or what I see him responding with. And then to see him um, throw another video back at me as a response and get surprised by his decisions and, um, 
I don't know, that was, that was an exciting part because when you're in the studio together, uh, it's, it's very sort of codependent, you know, uh, the process. But then this was like two very independent um, entities. Like uh, mine was an independent phrase and his was a response off of mine, but it was also independent of me. Like I wasn't giving him feedback right away. So I, I think that was really cool. Um, and then the surprise factor. Can you tell me, so, so for this one, how did this, who started this, this conversation? Uh, this one was Jeremy. Jeremy started this one, and then I did a little reaction to his, right? Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's correct. Like, something that I was thinking about was uh, a lot of just, like, space holding, making shapes, then doing, like, subtle gestures or whatever to, like, for her to initiate off of. So it's, like, I think it's, like, this thing that I was working on, like, on one of my last pieces where it was the whole concept of partnering but not, like, physically touching, so just like certain arm gestures or whatever initiate the movement of somebody else. So they're reacting to it, even though they're not being physically touched. Going with that and giving their ample space for her to react. So it was more of like arm switch on the flick of the wrist, like she moved a body part or something. So going off of that like connection. So this is outside of my apartment. Um, I live in an apartment building with someone above me and then someone below me and that's it. And everyone is gone right now. So um, it's just me and Dorian um, and we're just, you know, we have all our stuff is out in the hallway that we need. And so I just kind of moved everything out from outside of the apartment and just created this little like nook. So I have the staircase is like right where the iPhone is and I wanted to have like an interesting angle so that if they wanted to you know, use anything of the actual choreography of what I'm playing um, that they could. And then I also had another camera set up over here. Um, and there's a beautiful skylight, so I was able to get natural light. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely, when I was doing, recording this, I was very aware of the fact that um, I'm being watched, you know? Like, usually with, with recording, it's like, you know, you can just sit down and do like several chunks and put them all together. But this was like one take and you know, I don't know what the dancers and the, and the videographer are going to decide to use. So I was like, I'm going to give them the setup <laughs> and then like the ending, not just what the music is. But I will also say too, that um, the creation of all of this, I think this is one of those challenging times that, you know, no, none of us have ever experienced and no one in our lifetime has ever experienced um, of this, where is the reason to create? And every now and then, you know, if you go on social media, you know, you get this kind of like societal pressure of like, well, so-and-so discovered gravity, you know, like in isolation, like, what are you doing with your time? And it's like, it puts a lot of pressure on people. Like so-and-so wrote this great novel during isolation. And it's, I think that a lot of artists are struggling, you know, myself included being like, well, I have no reason to be creating right now. Like if I create, like, who cares? Like, we don't even know what this world is going to look like in a year, like, will there even be a place for us? And I think that kind of gets into some heavy, <laughs> some heavy ideas. Like if we can't collect in large groups, what is, what is our world going to look like over the next year or so? And like, if it's not this current situation, like, can something like this happen again? Um, and how will our world and society be changed because of it? And I think we're, you know, we're still kind of in the, the cloud, not clouds, but we're kind of in the smoke right now, like in the fog, we don't really know anything of how this is going to affect us long term. And I think that's really scary as an artist, because we're already living with existential dread about our art form. And <laughs> now that like any support system that we had that made us feel like validated about our existence is vanishing. And, you know, not to get really dark, but like, that's, <laughs> I don't know, that's just kind of my little, my little dissertation about that. I keep thinking that too. I keep thinking similar dark thoughts. And then I look at this and I'm like, God, I need this. You know? Yeah, it's a really, um, just a really introspective and sensitive piece. 
you know, that has a lot of opportunity for fragility and also like emotion, emotional explosion, you know, but I don't know, um, like what the, what the piece, what was the process of getting to know the piece for you two, Amy and Jeremy? Oh, just listening to it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of hard because there's no, there's no sort of, um, no, it's it's like a big swell, right? And it kind of builds up and there's this big swell and then it drops off and then there's no sort of, oh, well, this section, like, we'll do this and this section, we'll do that. It all, like, bleeds so seamlessly and beautifully together. And sometimes mm -hmm. that makes it a little more difficult to know how to how to kind of switch around phrase work and tempo and timing in, in the dance, you know. But, um, yeah, I just kept listening over and over to it. And... I love how intense it gets and then it sort of drops off and then there's this little playful bit at the end. Like, I think yeah. that's, just, yeah, I love that part. It's so unexpected. I think that like this piece of music uh, being used for this type of project in terms of like dance for film and whatnot, like it really lends itself to it because like there's so many different avenues that you can pursue or that you can like go on um, as far as like not having everything being completely linear doesn't necessarily mean that like everything that we choreograph to has to like fall in place at certain points of the music. It's like kind of like you're choosing your own adventure. Like, let's see how like all these sections work in um, all, all these pieces of choreography. You know, if we like look at it like as a puzzle piece and like try to, you know, place it here during this section of the music or vice versa. And then of course with editing, like you can, there's so many things you can do, like in manipulating time and like space and like all that other stuff. So I think that it, like the music is beautiful and it like mm. really works for this kind of thing. Gosh, guys, this is amazing. I love doing this. I love just talking like this. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> it's like the, the, the kind of conversations that we don't usually make time for, you know, among friends. In, in our real lives and our creative lives, even. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for letting us rope you into this. <laughs> I, bringing us together. I, I hope that we learn from these kinds of moments when this is all over. You know, we know we're going to have a new normal. I hope that this sort of communication becomes part of our new normal. Yeah, I was gonna say there, there is, um, there is all that like existential dread about our art form and everything, and how sad it is. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that it'll open up space for smaller companies to sort of dive in. But also, there, I, my friends are all over the world, and and I've never ever thought to collaborate with someone who's moved to Berlin, you know, on a, on choreography. And this is the first time that I've been like, oh, maybe I could collaborate with my friends more and. Um, that's a really nice, it's almost like feeling a little more connected to people who are far away, even though we're so, <laughs> yeah. so isolated. <laughs> it's, it's weird, but it's cool. <laughs>